everybody. Good morning. Praise God. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Thanks. We're with the Prophet's Teaching Group. We're talking about dreams and visions. Oh boy. God still Praise speaks God. to Good people morning. in powerful ways. Amen. Amen. Excuse me, I will make a gesture for you. Enjoy the Lord today. Good morning, everybody. You can turn the music up just a little bit, can't you? Let's everybody rock it out with us this morning. Praise God. Everybody lift it high and Everybody. Everybody lift it Everybody, everybody, praise this name. for joining us, Minister Erica Edge, PIT, Prophet in Training. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning. Shalom. Good morning, Shalom. It's Tuesday morning here in the land of the living, and I'm so glad that God woke me up this morning. How about you? Absolutely. I'm Apostle <laughs> Jonathan, and this is Prophet Tina. Amen. And we're glad to see you here this morning. God bless you. <laughs> Praise God. You know what? What? God still speaks to his people today. He sure does. And guess Hallelujah. what? He speaks to them in dreams and, and in visions. visions. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Among other things, okay, God is still speaking to us in dreams and visions. And he said, if there's a prophet among you, hallelujah, and he have a dream, let him tell it. And if he have a word, let him say it. Praise God. Hallelujah. And also in Numbers. What does it say in Numbers 12 verse 6? Hallelujah. He says, I'm going to speak to my prophets. I'm going to speak to them in dreams and in visions. Oh, bless God. Hallelujah. <laughs> and so that's what we're exploring now. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Praise God. And you he think God still stopped. does things like that? I absolutely do. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you would have thought that went away with Abraham and Isaac, or, no. or at least David, or, or at least the apostles. Uh, Some of the cessationists Jesus. say that a lot of these gifts, and, or the gifts are... And are not for today. They're, they're cessationalists, okay? And they believe that all that stuff stopped, all right? But no, the gifts of the Spirit have not stopped. God never stopped His gifts. He's always had a witness, you know, of His power and His glory and His anointing on this earth. And as we study the history 
you know, of uh, the Christian church and the history of the spirit flowing through our lives since Christ Jesus. God has never pulled the plug. <laughs> He's never pulled the plug on any of the promises. All the promises are yay mm, and amen. Praise God. He has gifts. And he's given gifts to men. He's given the five-fold ministry gifts. He's given spiritual gifts for the work of the ministry. And everything is so that Jesus can be made known because he made the Father known in the earth. It's all about the glory of God, y'all, operating in us, through us, and by us. And he's given us everything that we need <laughs> to perpetrate oh, his God. anointing on the earth. Hallelujah. To perpetrate his glory. Yep, I'm a perp. I admit it. I perpetrate the glory of God. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Good morning, Apostle Stone. Praise God. So we're in the visions today. Praise God. And we're going to pray right now in the name of Jesus because we want to usher in God's glory here with us today. Praise God. We're talking about visions and we're talking about the seers and we're talking about uh, the glory of God and how he manifests himself to his seers in dreams and in visions. And so we're going to ask the Lord, hallelujah, for his presence today. But what we really want to do, Jonathan and I want to let you know that we are laying ourselves before the Lord, hallelujah, today, yielding the gift and the callings that he has given us uh, for your purpose. And it is all about you. It's all for you uh, today. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you so much for this day. And we yield ourselves to you, Father. We yield uh, all the knowledge, uh, all the gifting that you've given us, Father. And we lay it down before you. We lay ourselves down before you this morning and this day. And we call upon your glory, your truth, and the power of your Holy Spirit to be made manifest in our midst today. We welcome the Holy Spirit. We know that it is his leading and his guiding that we are here today. He is leading us and guiding us, you know, in this time uh, that God has assigned for us to be before you. And so we call on the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation, and the spirit of knowledge, hallelujah, as an anointing to operate through us and by us. And we ask that the Lord would open up the eyes of your understanding, that as his wisdom, his knowledge, hallelujah, his revelation comes forth, you will be able to see like you've never seen before, praise God. As he has assigned us to bring these teachings to you, he's anointed them and graced them. We don't want you to miss anything that the Holy Spirit is doing. He's operating in our midst. midst. He's working uh, in our midst. And Father, we call you know, upon uh, the express power of your glory in the midst of us today. As we yield to your presence as we yield to your glory, as we yield to your way in obedience unto you, Father, as we open our mouths, we ask that you put your words in our mouths, the words that you want your people to hear today. And as we talk about dreams and as we talk about visions and as we talk about the seer anointing, this is your gift. This is the gift that you've given men. This is your call, Lord. You're calling the seers. The clarion call has come from you. And so we are here in this place, Father, to be used of you. So we lay ourselves before you. We bow before you, Father. Have your way. In Jesus' name we pray today. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We, we you. thank you, Lord. We pray for each person that's joining us this morning. Hallelujah. That mm -hmm. you would be filled with his joy and anointing, his power and his blessing. That you would know the Lord as you would know the voice of the Lord. Amen. Mm. Amen. It, uh, yes, maybe mm. you've had dreams before, but as you move into the prophetic, God speaks to the prophets in, in dreams and visions, and we know that they're real because we've seen them come to pass. Yes. We've felt the anointing yes. of God. Hallelujah. And we know that mm -hmm. God is moving in this day and age. Hallelujah. I don't know what he did before mm -hmm. I was born. I don't know what he did other than reading the stories. But I know God's moving today. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I know he's moving in this generation. Yes. Hallelujah. In a powerful way. Yes. Many believe this is the last generation. I don't know when he's coming. Uh, no man knows the hour or the day. But we know that God is moving now. Hallelujah. And if we'll listen and obey, he, Thank you. Mm, what does the promise say? You will have the best of the land. 
how to do it. You may be persecuted, you may be troubled, you may be misunderstood, but the Lord our God is worthy to be praised. How to do it. He says, take up your cross daily and follow me. So with joy, oh, Jesus even said in Hebrews, it says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, Amen. despising the shame, and sat down Thank at the you. right hand of the Lord Thank God you. Almighty. Thank oh, God. bless the Lord. Bless Thank the Lord. You. It's Thank worth you. it to fight through. It's worth it to bless yes. the Lord. It's worth it to see it. Hallelujah. We seek the Lord regardless of what men may say. We seek God's power and strength regardless of what people around us think. We praise the Lord and we preach the gospel. Hallelujah. How can men know about the things that we've experienced unless we tell them? How can people know about God's glory unless those of us who have seen God and blessed his holy name and felt the wonders of his grace, how can they have a clue as to what we're talking about? Hallelujah. You and I have to go forth in love, in wisdom, in understanding, in strength, in power, and and show forth the glory of God. We cannot expect others to do it when they have no clue. So Lord, give us strength, give us wisdom and power and strength and Oh, we just thank you, oh God, opportunity to spread your good news and to spread your power in Jesus' name. Bless the prophet and bless each one of you with the glory of God. Hallelujah. May you you know his ways and his wisdom. May you have his strength, his expediency. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, may you know his wisdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And may you be a witness for the Lord Jesus and all that he has for us. Amen. I speak life and light and revelation into your eyes right now in the name of Jesus. We pray that your eyes, the eyes of your understanding, the eyes of your heart will be opened right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God gave me a vision the other day and I saw people, you know, walking, just everybody walking in a a certain direction, coming like from desert places, coming from behind hills and coming from behind, behind mountains where they were hidden and tucked away. And I saw them walking towards the light. And the light, the Lord said, was the call. The call that he has assigned to the seers in this day and in this time. This is the era of the seer, the Lord says. It is the era of the saints that see. And God is validating that gifting and that call on the inside of you. And he is going to blow it out and increase it even more so. God has called you to power. Okay, after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall receive power. Not only are you called in the seer's giftings, hallelujah, as a prophet of God, you are called to power. Okay, God is calling you, and what he's doing is just like he called Moses off the backside of the desert. He had been on the desert for 40 years, hidden, tucked away by God. And God called him forth in that day and time and brought him to the mountain and gave him his ministry, gave him a clue, because Moses didn't have a clue, okay? But God gave him a clue. Not only did he give him a clue, he gave him more than one clue to who he was and what his purpose and his destiny was in this world. And as a seer, as a prophetic seer, now when we're talking about a seer for the purpose of our teaching, we're talking about prophetic seers. There are seers in the world who have these gifts, but we're not talking about psychics today. We're not talking about witches or sorcerers. We're talking about the prophetic anointing of a seer. Okay, let's keep everything in context, okay, into, into, what, God, into what God is saying and what he's doing. And he's calling you, okay? He's drawing you. He's drawing you and driving you to a place as Jesus was led or driven uh, by the Spirit, you know, into the wilderness, into the desert, Okay? As, as the Holy Spirit is moving upon you, God has assigned teachings, understandings, hallelujah, for you to receive as he is opening up your eyes, as he's opening up your heart to a deeper revelation, to a deeper spiritual knowledge of him. There is a new anointing that has come forth for a new generation. Not only is it just a new generation Uh, uh, I mean, it's a new generation in general, but more specifically, today we're talking about the new anointing that God is bringing forth on the seer, the seer anointing, the prophetic seer anointing. We've been talking about what it is, how we can access it, and how we can increase it. 
But before we can even talk about increasing it, as God is going to do, he wants you to be firmly grounded, okay, in the knowledge of what this gifting and this call is. He wants you to be grounded in the scriptures. He wants you to be grounded in the logos. Because this gifting comes through God. The Holy Spirit leads you and guides you, teaches you and tells you. But God, the Holy Spirit, and the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Word must all agree. And since you are sent of God, hallelujah, you as a seer of God, even in the visions that you see and the dreams that you have, they all must agree in the spirit realm with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and the Logos, the written word that we have before us. So we want you to understand that your gifting, even though it doesn't seem like it, when you see those wild and crazy symbols that you see in your dreams and the way they come together, God is actually giving you insight into the spirit realm, opening your eyes, the window that's in your spiritual eyes so that you can see what he sees. Okay, and so when God does that, we want you to know that even though the dreams may not even resemble anything that you've ever seen before or come together in a way that you, don't, you haven't seen before, everything has to agree with God, with the Word, with the Spirit of God, hallelujah, with the truth of God and with the way of God. Praise God. And before we get into the details too much, I want to just mention that God speaks to us in a variety of ways. How to do it. What we're doing is we're taking the time to look at this particular gift of the mm -hmm, seer mm -hmm. and the dreams and the visions. In Ecclesiastes, it says that a, a man dreams because of the multitude of business. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're talking about mm -hmm. here. We're talking about a prophetic word. And, and it says the someplace else that when a, a prophet dreams a dream mm -hmm. it's a different thing mm -hmm. and I just wanted to bring up Jeremiah twenty three twenty eight. the prophet that hath a dream let him tell a dream mm -hmm. and he that hath my word let him speak mm -hmm. my word faithfully Amen. praise Amen. God Amen. and then it goes on and says is not my word like as a fire mm -hmm. saith the Lord and like a hammer that breaketh a rock in pieces mm -hmm. Sometimes we we think of the Lord. Oh, praise God! When it, you know, back in the charismatic movement in the seventies, it seemed like the Lord was so sweet. <laughs> Hallelujah! And He was bringing he us was, along. And so yeah. many of the uh, the prophecies where I was began with, "My children, I long to be with you." Uh, and He was He was calling us as a father mm -hmm. to spend time with Him. But there are times.
comes with the vision that you know that you know there's a place in your knower, in your spirit realm, that you know that that's God. You recognize the spirit. Okay, nothing wrong with trying the spirits to see if they be of God. But like I said, there's a place, a knowing place on the inside of you that with this anointing, this new realm of glory, hallelujah, oh, this new place then for a new anointing, for the new generation that God is bringing forth, a new generation of prophetic seers that he's bringing forth, there's going to be a place of knowing that you know that you know that you know the voice of God like never before. You're going to know that you know that you know the sight of God like never before, what God is showing you, okay? So, bless the Lord for, 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 uh, for visions. You, sometimes you get an audible message, okay? An audible message, and, and, and uh, you can actually hear the voice of God. You can hear him, you know, audibly with your natural ears, and you can hear him in your spirit. In Matthew 3, 17, it says, And behold, a voice out of heaven, out of the heaven said, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. And that was to John the Baptist. But he, the heavens opened up. There was an open heaven, and John heard the voice audibly. Okay, now often visions are going to include a voice speaking a message along with the visual image. And sometimes the message is declared apart from any of the visual pictures. Okay, now audible messages in the spirit realm can involve people speaking words or objects, objects making sounds. And we can perceive such messages inside of us by our inner ears or outside of us by our physical ears. Okay, voices or sounds we hear internally can indeed be messages, praise God, one moment, from the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. That which we hear outside of us, okay, a message from above and beyond. Audible messages from the Lord come in many ways, okay? In many ways. The Holy Spirit, Jesus, the Father, angels of the Lord, and very of various realms and numerous other sounds he will use to get his word to you, to get his message to you. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. Sometimes audible voices that aren't familiar to us may bring doubt and confusion and sometimes even fear. Deceiving and seducing spirits, to be perfectly honest with you, deceiving and seducing spirits, you know, are usually the ones who behave mysteriously, okay, as though they have something to hide. And the word occult means hidden. We don't have anything to hide. It's the enemy that tries to hide. Okay, but we can flush out Satan and his cohorts. We can flush them out through the blood of Jesus. And we can test these voices and these spirits that we're hearing by pouring the blood of Jesus on them. Okay, just test the spirits to see and to determine if they be from God. Nothing wrong with that. The spirit of God will stand up to testing, not afraid to be tested. The truth is not afraid to be tested. There's no fear in the truth. Okay, oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Try the spirits and see if they be of God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. God is not the author of doubt. He's not the author of confusion. And he certainly is not the author of fear. Okay, when God releases a message to us, even through his angels, one of his angels, we should sense a spirit of purity, of peace, and of holiness, and a reverence to the Lord. Okay, because we have nothing to hide. Truly from God, there's nothing to hide. Okay, the spirit of God is not afraid to be tested. You hear me? It's not afraid to be tested. You don't have to be afraid to be tested. Praise God, because what, of, what is of God, we receive it and, and keep it in us. But if it is not of God, we throw it away, right? There's an old saying in, in Christianity, you know, what do we do? We chew, chew up the something and spit out the bones. What was it? I forgot what it was. <laughs> Just chew, out the meat. Chew, chew the meat up, but uh, spit out the bones. Okay. Get all the good meat, you know, and okay. And that's okay. And it's not a big deal. Diane's saying she can't get access to hear or see me. Okay, Diane, what I want you to know, and all of you who are having some trouble with this this morning, praise God, that the replay will be on Facebook. The replay will be on uh 
Profitina channel on YouTube. All right, the replay will be on Periscope as well. And if any of you are logged into Live Me, my replays are on Live Me as well as Tenacity, T I N A C I T Y, Tenacity. The Tenacity channel on Live Me, the Profitina channel on YouTube and on Periscope. Oh, hallelujah. We come against every attack on our equipment this morning. Praise God, Father. We glorify the internet here in this house. In the name of Jesus, right now, we put our hands to it. Father, this is your work and this is your call. Hallelujah. And I'm asking you to send your ministering angels to destroy the works of the evil one. Praise God, we are doing your work here. This is your will for this word to go out. And no devil in hell is going to stop, you know, what you're doing, Father. This is, it's not even, it's, it's illegal for him to even try to mess with this equipment and with the internet this morning. And so we come against every attack on the internet, on the waves, and every principality over the area where you are. Hallelujah. Yeah, there is, Kenneth said it, eat the fish and spit out the bones, right? Um... Oh, hallelujah. Mm, praise God. Send this anointing. Apostle of God, we're, we're going to have you come and pray over our uh, internet lines today. And, the, you know, the lines have to go through territories where the principalities that want to block what God is doing. But we are coming against every principality right now and rulers of darkness. And we dispatch God's warrior angels right now to tear down every stronghold that's blocking the call of God, the work of God from getting through right now in the name of Jesus. I do have permission in the Holy Spirit to move in this realm by God himself, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Right now, I'm calling on my buddies, my buddies. I got some buddies, okay? And my buddy's name is Michael, and I got another buddy named Gabriel. And Michael is the, the head of the angel armies of God, and we're sending out the angels angel armies of God through Michael. Michael, we need your help today. Archangel Michael in Jesus' name. And I dispatch you to fight on our behalf and to send out the emissaries for the demonic forces that are coming against us this morning. Oh, hallelujah. God has seated us here. He's given us this seat of authority. And we as apostles and prophets, let's take the authority that God has given us. And that is authority over the enemy. Hallelujah. God always causes us to triumph. He's given us the victory in this situation. We are not doing this of our own accord. It, it is through the spirit of the living God. It is through the leading of the living God. Hallelujah. That has assigned us this place and uh, at this time and this day. Hallelujah. To get his truth out to his witnesses. Oh, hallelujah. And we come in the power, not in of ourselves, but we come in the power of of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Satan, the Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Every principality that's coming against us, the Lord rebuke you right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, according to uh, Jeremiah 50, verse 25, we're asking you to release the weapons that are in your armory. Hallelujah. Open up your armory and release the weapons that you've assigned to fight against the principalities that are fighting against us. This is your work in the land of the living and nothing is to come against the work that you're doing in the land of the living or us who you have called to do it. You've called us, appointed us, and anointed us, Father, in Jesus' name. And you said that you didn't call us, appoint us, and anoint us in a vacuum and a void. Okay, that your word must go forth and it will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish the purpose whereunto you sent it, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, hallelujah. Whew, hallelujah. Ooh, I can feel that. Wow. Whoa. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Enemy did not want you to know. Praise God that the Spirit of God is not afraid to be tested. Okay, that's what we were talking about, okay? Praise God. Hallelujah. It just ended one of our broadcasts, but we're just going to go right back in. All right? Praise God. We're going, we're going in. <laughs> we're going in. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Just give me a second here. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. We're back like me. We're back. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. All right, so we should, I'm going to say it again, okay? Praise God. 
Let's go right back over that again. Enemy did not want that word to get out, so we're just going to repeat it. We're going to double up on it, okay? <laughs> oh, praise God. Audible voices. We were talking about the audible voices. Sometimes they can come from your spirit. They can come from uh, your soulish, unregenerated soulish realm. And they can come from the enemy. We're talking about, uh, um, you know, hearing messages from God, okay? Audible voices that are assigned to the visions that he will give you. Praise God. Hallelujah. We were talking about the audible voice that John the Baptist heard when the heavens opened up, when he baptized Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. When he heard uh, the word of the Lord, God spoke audibly. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Matthew 3, 17. Now, often visions include a voice, a speaking message along with a visual image. Okay. And sometimes the message is declared apart from the visual uh, pictures. Okay. Audible messages in the spirit realm can involve people speaking words or objects objects making sounds. And we can perceive such messages inside of us by our inner ears or outside of us by our physical ears. Voices and sounds that we hear internally can indeed be messages from the Lord. That which we hear outside of us a message from above and beyond the natural mind and ears it's called su a supernatural <laughs> a supernatural a soup i got a, t a tongue tie here it's called a supernatural audible message a supernatural audible message audible messages from the lord come in many ways okay and the Holy Spirit, Jesus, the Father, angels of the Lord, of various realms, and numerous other sounds he uses. Okay? Now, sometimes you're, you're not familiar with the audible voices. And it could be something from inside of you. It could be the enemy coming from the outside of you. And sometimes it produces fear. It can bring doubt. It can bring confusion. Okay? Deceiving and seducing spirits are usually the ones who behave mysteriously. Okay, so if you, you know, you, the, these spirits are the ones that are behaving mysteriously. God is, you know, is not a God of mystery. He's not going to hide anything. I mean, he, he does reveal mysteries to us. But what I'm saying is that when he's talking to us, the point of him talking to us is about the revelation. He wants us to know. He's speaking to us so that we can know. So nothing is hidden. Okay, and so if you have a tendency to want to hide something, these, these demons don't want you to say something that you've heard, Usually, it's occultic uh, practices. Occult means hidden, all right? And so when the enemy tries to hide, we can actually flush him out by, by covering him in the blood of Jesus, okay? Through the blood of Jesus, we can peep him out because he's just not going to come, you know, and say something totally outrageous to you that you're not going to believe. He's going to mix it in, you know, with the truth and have enough truth in it where you would believe it. And sometimes you're totally deceived. That's why we're asking God to take the scales off of your eyes, just uh, off the, the blindness side of you, just in the same way that he took the scales off of Paul's eyes so that you can see in the spirit realm like never before. Okay? And so that's the anointing of increase that's coming. That's the keen anointing that's coming. That's the accurate anointing that's coming. Okay? So in this keenness and accurate anointing that's coming, there's an anointing to test the spirits. Okay, to determine if they are from God. All right. God is not the author of doubt or confusion or fear. And when God releases a message to us through one of his angels, we should sense either way he brings it, either through one of his angels, the Holy Spirit, and the diverse ways that he brings a message, whether it's an audible inside, audible outside, we should sense purity and holiness and peace and a reverence for the Lord. Okay, and openness. Okay, because they have nothing to hide. The Spirit of God is not afraid to be tested. And we should never fear offending God by testing the spirits. On the contrary, God is honored. Okay, God is honored when we do, when we test the spirits. Okay, he's honored when we do it. Okay, he told us in his word to do so. Look at John, 1 John 4, 1 through 3, okay? Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. You got some work ahead of you, but that's okay. It's all good. All right. It's all good. A lot is going to be pouring forth on the inside of you. And some of it is going to come with an automatic understanding of what's going on. But a lot of it, you're not going to understand automatically. 
all right? And God wants you to put all these processes in order, all right? Not to be afraid, not to doubt, not to be perplexed, not to be confused, but to know it's God. And if it isn't God, you can throw it out. And as Kenneth reminded us, chew the fish, eat the fish, spit out the bones, okay? Praise God. And that's all you do. No big deals. In it, the enemy's coming in. Watch out for him. All right? Try the spirits and see if they be of God. The Bible is full of examples of individuals who heard God or an angel speak in an audible voice. Okay, Matthew 3.17. We just went over that when Jesus was baptized uh, and on the Mount of Transfiguration. Luke 9, 28 through 36. God speaks to Peter, James, and John on the Mount of Transfiguration. The angel speaks to Philip. That's Acts 8.26. The Lord Jesus speaks to Saul on the road to Damascus. That's an awesome one. Jesus showed up himself. Woo! <laughs> Glory! We want some more of those kind of experiences, don't we? Where Jesus himself shows up. Okay? And when he shows up, what does he do? He brings himself. He brings the power of God. Hallelujah. He brings God. He reveals himself. Hallelujah! Glory to God. We want to send Jesus to, you know, over to, uh, to people who don't know him. Okay, and I hear that he's been showing up in a lot of Arab countries. He's been showing up himself to Muslims and things like that. Isn't that exciting? Praise God. So that's the kind of Jesus we serve. Praise God. Uh, angel speaks to Philip in Acts 8, 26. Okay, the angel speaks to the prophets, teachers, and other believers in Antioch. Okay, that's in Acts 13, 1 through 3. We should not be afraid of the possibility of hearing an audible voice from the Lord. <laughs> Rest assured. Jesus said that his sheep know his voice. That's John 10, 27. He is the great teacher, the greatest teacher in all of history. He is the teacher and he wants us to hear his voice even more than we want to hear it. Praise God. And so there's some other ways that we're going to go into on other days, you know, and how the, the manifestation, you know, of the visions of God uh, can manifest to you. Variety of ways, diverse ways ways that God will come and speak to you. And it's what's so good about the seer anointing and prophets coming together in a company of prophets as we're doing here on the Prophets Teaching Group is that we can share and exchange, you know, the experiences that God has given us. We can be a test for each other. We can be the litmus test on visions and dreams for each other. Good morning. Praise God. Periscope, thanks for joining. Praise God. And so, you know, that's why it's so important for us to come together. Um, iron sharp, sharpens iron. And, and we can lay down all that we have and all that we know and interact and share with each other and help and build each other up in our most holy faith. Praise God. And so um, another way that God can work with you is giving you divine sight. Like, you know, praise God. Praise God, hallelujah. Remember the divine sight that God gave Moses when he said, I must turn aside now in, in Exodus 3, 3. I must turn aside now and see this marvelous sight. Why the bush is burning, but it's not burning up. All right. So as we look at the scriptures, you can see now that the visions that you have, oh, hallelujah. And the dreams that you're having as a seer is not that unusual. God said he was going to talk to you as a prophet in this way. He's going to reveal himself in dreams and in visions, speak to you in dreams and reveal his nature in the visions. Okay? And he says, if there's a prophet among you with a dream, speak it. And if you got a word, say it. Okay? So this is the natural flow. This is the MO, the modus of operandi of a prophet, of a, of a seer. Hello, good morning, Periscope. Praise God. Okay? So this is your MO. Praise God. And I was letting you know, me personally now, I would say that I'm, I'm, I'm about one-third uh, uh, seer. Okay? God deals with me in dreams. He deals with me in visions. He deals with me in all of... Uh, I've had almost all of these kinds of manifestations, and I'm pretty sure that you have as well. But it, I'm not... But I'm about one-third that. I'm really more insightful, okay? And I'm more the kind of um, um, prophet that is more an inspirational prophet through speech, through teaching, okay? But nevertheless, God uses me in these ways. And so now, you know, since, you know, I've been looking at all of this information and studying how God moves through us as visionaries and as seers, praise God, God is increasing that level in me, okay? Where I'd say I'm up to 45% now, maybe even 40, let's say 40% now. Praise God. But there's more that is to come. 
Not only is he increasing me, but he's increasing you in this area. And I'm not even going to ask him why, you know, the increase is long. He's he got something planned. You know what I mean? God got something planned. And whatever it is that he, he's got planned, I want, I want in. Okay? I want in on it. All right? Oh, hallelujah. And I know that you do too. Praise God. There's a new anointing for a new generation. The seer anointing. Hallelujah. God, the saints that see. This is the era of the seer, the season of the seer. Praise God. Hallelujah. And God is increasing that anointing and a clarion call has gone forth, an anointing of a call from God. God is calling you from the backside of the desert, from those hidden places that you've been in as the intercessor, as praying, you know, in the background, seeing what God has given you to see and working and operating the best that you knew how and what he had given you. Well, he's bringing more. <laughs> there's a greater anointing, there's a greater level, there's another assignment, praise God, that you've been faithful on the backside of the desert, you hear what I'm saying, and now God is bringing this gifting and call to the foreground, to the forefront, hallelujah, he's taking the spooky out of it, okay, so you just sit on down with your old spooky self, okay, he's taking the eerie out of it, okay, we're not talking about no ghost story, you know, no, this is not horror. This is not a horror movie. This is the real deal from God. All right. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Whoa, there's an anointing on that. Woo. We want to slay the spooky. Okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. I know, you know, a sorcerer came up to Paul when he was on the aisle. Elimas was his name. Bar Jesus. He cast that devil out of that man, caused that man to go blind because he was a sorcerer. Okay. So we're talking about seeing what God wants to happen and doing what he wants us uh, to do. Do you think that Paul might have got a vision or an insight from God before that, that uh, sorcerer went blind? All right. So what I'm saying to you is that with the great giftings and great anointings, you know, that we've seen in people that have come before us and that have gone before us, do you realize they weren't doing that in and of themselves, that God was showing them what to do? We have the greats like Catherine Coleman and, you know, um, you know, like even Alive Now, Benny Hinn, and we have the Oral Roberts and, you know, um, even, you know, our, um, our apostle uh, Kenneth Cox, you think he's doing all that he's doing, you know, in and of himself. God is talking to him. God shows us what he wants us to do. All right. And so I believe our greatness is based on, you know, not so much as we compare ourselves to other prophets and other apostles, but I think, and I really want to be quoted on this. I really want you to get that this is where I am with this, that your greatness, the greatness that God has given you is not in comparison to the greatness of other men and women who have gone before you or who are even living now, but your greatness depends on you seeing uh, what God has shown you and paying attention to what he's called you to do, okay? Being in that place of ever vigil, vigilant, ever ready to hear what he's saying to you, to see, you know, in the, in the spirit realm what he has given you to do and you to do it to the best of your ability in the sphere, you know, in the realm of authority that he's given you. And therein lies your greatness, that you fulfill the call that God has given you. We love the Apostles Coxes, okay? Apostle Cox and um, Prophetess Sab Sabina Cox. And we love the way they're teaching us. We love the vision, you know, that God has given, you know, the man and the woman of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we thank God that there are, they are walking in what God has assigned them to walk in. And therein lies their greatness. Praise God. And even though I can follow them as they follow Christ, I still can't do what they do. I got to do what God is showing me to do as well as you. I will follow them as they follow Christ because they're upright and they're worthy to be followed. Hallelujah. But in the following of them, hallelujah, my greatness is, my personal greatness is, it's not that I'm going to borrow greatness from Apostle Cox and the prophetess. Okay, my greatness is in now that they have shown me the way, they're showing me the way and what to do. I've got to find my place, my avenue, my street, my lane. And my greatness lies in me walking in the lane that God has assigned to me. But, hallelujah, the apostle and the prophetess has helped to light that way up. Okay, by following them. So praise God, hallelujah. Your greatness is, lies in your assignment. Hallelujah, in the assignment that God has given you. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
<laughs> Thank you. Now, we, 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 we talked a lot, you know, about different ways that visions can manifest. Praise God today. And we, we're going to, well, maybe we might have time to talk a little bit about open heavens. You know, in Isaiah, uh, uh, the prayer for the open heaven. Hallelujah. And now we had, you know, I had said earlier that we were going to talk about uh, Ezekiel. We've been skirting around Ezekiel, you know, uh, a bit. But as we go on in this, this teaching, we're going to get more into Ezekiel as the, the ultimate visionary, you know, from God. Seeing what God was shown, doing what God showed him to do, you know, praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise God. And so now it came about in the 30th year, on the fifth day of the fourth month, while I was by the river Chibar, among the exiles, that the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God, Ezekiel 1.1. And so you know of late we've been praying on open heavens, open heavens, open heavens come forth, hallelujah. So an open heaven is a vision where a hole seems to appear in the immediate sky and the celestial realm is disclosed and heavenly sights of God become seeable. The term open heaven uh, it originated in historic revivals to describe those times when the manifested presence of God seems to come down in a tangible manner as conviction of sin, conversions, and healings take place. And we are now moving in this era, era of the prophetic seer, a prophetic renewal going forth, and a new epic of the Holy Spirit. And we are crossing into a threshold and into a period of apostolic open heavens for whole cities and regions to be visited by the presence of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> open heavens. Praise God. It, the heavens opened when Jesus was baptized, when, when John the Baptist heard the voice of God, when the angel, I mean, when the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove, that was after the heavens had, hope, had opened. Ezekiel, you know, minding his business, sitting by the river, you know, just kind of chilling at the river. And all of a sudden, the heavens opened and he has this glorious vision. All right, praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Stephen, when he was being stoned, Stephen was being stoned in, in the Acts for preaching the gospel. He looked up into heaven and saw the sky loosened and the clouds rolled back and Jesus standing there to receive him. That's Acts 7, 55 and 56. Open heavens. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And the apostle John was about 80 years old and in exile on the island of Patmos. Okay, when, oh, shirabasho koto boshina namanda baseka, while meditating on the Lord's day, he heard a voice and saw a door opened in heaven. Mm. Oh, hallelujah. And he is then shown the one who walks among the lampstands and receives many detailed messages from the Lord. Revelations 1 1, or Revelations 1. Open heavens. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. You know, I want to talk about, just for a second, uh, you know, I grew up in a church where for 20 years I never heard a thing about dreams and visions, about uh, the power of God in this way. But you know, the Bible says to be ready in season and out of season. Preach the word. Amen. And we talk about a full gospel because... <laughs> Our responsibility, whether we've experienced it or we haven't experienced it, is to preach the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And when we see the word dreams mentioned mm -hmm. over and over and over, when we see the word over visions... Over 200 times. Oh, mm -hmm. many, many times in, in Scripture. Many, many times. Hallelujah. That's part of the Gospel. Yes. The miracles, the angels, the, the manifest presence of God. And then in our center, in the, you know, a hundred years ago at Azusa Street, they, those people were intercessors mainly, mm -hmm. but they had heard about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They had heard about speaking in tongues. They knew they needed to pray. And the glory of God mm -hmm. would fill that place mm -hmm. in Azusa Street so strongly mm -hmm. that a glory cloud would come and fill mm -hmm. that place. It was, mm -hmm. And we're not talking about just mm -hmm. for a few seconds. Mm -hmm. There are stories about kids playing hide and seek in the glory because it was <laughs> so, was so thick. thick yeah can you imagine Woo, glory this is not something that it just happens uh in the bible days this is not something that just happened uh you know 500 years ago god is moving again how to do we're hearing stories of the glory cloud 
<coughs> coming in Mexico, coming in different places, how to do coming in different colors. <coughs> so whether you've seen it or not seen it, you if you're I'm speaking to you ministers out there. Mm-hmm. If you've never seen these things mm-hmm. and you're afraid to preach about it, don't. Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid to preach about it. Preach the word as much as you can with the understanding that you can. Mm -hmm. And guess what? God's going to start opening those things up to you. God's going to start bringing that forth in your church, Mm -hmm. in your body, in those places where you dream. Hallelujah. You know, I don't know a minister. We watch quite a bit of uh, messages on on television and and things that are are taped and things like that. and it's amazing. Well, we watch it on <clears throat> YouTube, really. It's YouTube on our television. All right, praise but, God. But even on television, we'll, we'll hear something that God is saying to us, mm-hmm. and then we'll turn on the TV, and there's a preacher that doesn't even believe in the spiritual gifts, and he's preaching the same word. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Mm-hmm. That's because it's God that's in charge. Amen. God knows what needs to be said Amen. and when, and he knows what he wants to emphasize mm-hmm. and when. And so if God is emphasizing something, he's emphasizing something. Mm-hmm. Praise God. And we use all the spiritual gifts we have mm-hmm. and glory. let the glory of God flow through those. Amen. So whether you have this, you know, whether you have dreams and visions all the time or just occasionally, mm-hmm. or maybe you never have had any at this point, don't put it in the in the drawer and never take it out mm-hmm. say this god has moved this way and we need to preach this and mm-hmm. god will do it again mm-hmm. hallelujah he is mm-hmm. the same yesterday today and forever mm-hmm. hallelujah mm-hmm. i appreciate your teaching on this because it needs to be taught amen, amen. praise god it, that is let me know just as you were teaching uh, apostle uh, that there's some closet uh, seers out there. <laughs> You're in a closet, okay? And that's why the Lord has given me that vision. He's adding more and more to that vision, more understanding to what I saw the other day. And I saw him calling people. And he was the, the vision, I mean, the call, the clarion call had gone out, you know, from him. And, and everybody, the, the, well, I saw people walking, coming from behind mountains, coming out of crevices, coming out of corners, and answering the call, flowing towards the call, the light of God. And so what he's revealing to me today is that you, we got some closet prophetic seers out there. You are in the closet with this gift. You haven't revealed to anybody some of the stuff that God has revealed to you. And a lot of it has to do with the body of Christ because you haven't had a place to, to deposit this information. Okay, there's been a lot of confusion about it. A lot of um, 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 people have abused this gifting and because of the abuse, you know, there's a lot of people who feel like they're going to be deceived or they're being deceived, and you just sat down quiet on these things that God is revealing to you. God is showing you people. He's showing you their personalities. He's showing you the attitude. He's even showing you sin, where sin is. He's opened your eyes to a lot of different things that are going on. Praise God. And you, um, you know, you haven't come forward with it. So God is calling you out of the closet now, Seer. This gifting, Hallelujah has a new assignment on it, a new a glory, a new glory on it. Praise God. It has a new place in the kingdom of God that it used to have a long time ago before before Samuel opened up the school of the prophets and then they started calling seers prophets, but way before Samuel there were seers and the kings had these men in high position high positions in their cabinet and they were the ones that helped them to determine you know which way to go and what to do okay Daniel was one of these people okay that God used in a high call you know with the king of Persia okay where the king of Persia knew the spirit the Holy Spirit of God was in Daniel and that Daniel could figure out a matter God would reveal secrets to him okay and so not only was Daniel a dreamer, but God gave him the interpretation of the dreams as well. He could figure out hard stuff, hard problems, okay? And so this was the purpose of the seers way back, way back, way back in the day before we were called prophets, all right? And so God is returning that grace, returning that anointing. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, all right? The Holy Spirit hasn't lost any of its, its power <laughs> today, all right? And no, so what no, no. God is saying is that now in this day and time, that anointing that comes from the power of the Holy Ghost being in you is for a new day, a new assignment, and this time for the seers are manifesting. The saints with sight, 
You hear what I'm saying? This is the season of the seer, the era of the seer. And God is lifting you up now. He's brushing off all that dirt and dust off you. The shame of this gift, the confusion around this gift, okay? Okay, and so God is calling you out now. Come on out of that closet. That's right, Kenneth. You keep confessing that you are a prophetic seer. You are a seer of God. How would you like to, for God to give uh, President Trump the, the governor of your state, okay, the presidents of all those different countries, okay, the, the, what's the lady that's in the news now in England, the prime minister of England, to give her a dream that perplexes her so much that she found out that you have a, a holy gift from God, <laughs> hallelujah, that God will show you the matter and calls on you to interpret it, hallelujah, praise God, wouldn't that be awesome, <laughs> yes, Ophelia, you are a seer. Claim it. Wear your seer badge. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> Put it on. Wear it. God is clean, has cleaned up this anointing, cleaned up this place, and taken you up out of the dust and dirt and out of the closet, and he's catapulting you into the foreground. This is a powerful gift. Now, remember now, God is catapulting you into the foreground in the same way that he did with Daniel. Daniel was used in the marketplace. Okay, he was he wasn't in the temple. He wasn't in the synagogue prophesying in this particular story. Anyway, where was Daniel? Daniel was in the yeah, palace. Yeah. He was in government being used by God. And they knew, you know, the Nebuchadnezzar knew that the holy God was with him. And Nebuchadnezzar didn't believe in him at that time. Okay, but he knew that Daniel could figure a matter out. But Daniel, when he ever he had an opportunity Hallelujah. To, dis to discern a dream. What was he doing, baby? He was preaching. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't he? He was preaching. Hey, this is not me. I, I, I'm not doing this in and of my own accord. Okay, I can do this by the power of God. It's God that re is the revealer of secrets. It's God that is the revealer, the interpreter of the dream. He uses me to do it, but God is doing it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, another thing that happens in, in life is uh, he spoke to one king, and he and he recognized that God was on him. Mm -hmm. I believe that was Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there was another king that rose up, uh, Cyrus, and and he said he didn't, he didn't know who he was. Mm -hmm. He didn't know his strength and his abilities. Mm -hmm. And there are times when you're going to be recognized, and God's going to use you, and you're going to go to a different church, or or you're going to be in a different situation, mm -hmm. and they don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. And so these gifts are going to have to come out. At the right time in the mm -hmm. right way, he uses and, you me know, a lot. Whine and cry mm -hmm. that, uh, that oh, they didn't know me like they used to know mm -hmm. me, you know, or things like that. I mean, look at the children of Israel. Joseph was the second in command, but then, you know, it was four hundred years before mm -hmm. uh, they came mm -hmm. uh, and, and were delivered by Moses. Praise and Moses God. grew up in there, but you know, he was eighty years old when he mm -hmm. came back, mm -hmm. and this this. Uh, Pharaoh didn't know who he was. Mm -hmm. And so there's a mm -hmm. lot of things that happen in life that makes life difficult, mm -hmm. you know, but your gift will make mm -hmm. room for you. Praise God. Uh, we you? know that Forever 21 is a Christian organization. They're Christians. How would you like it if God assigned you, you know, as a seer to be on the board of Forever 21? And as a seer, not operating as a regular board member, you know, uh, but operating in the seer gift. <laughs> <laughs> they got you there because you know how to figure stuff out, because the gift of God is in you. You can see. Hallelujah. How would you like that? To be placed in that kind of position for the glory of God to be manifested. How about with Chick-fil-A? That's a Christian company. To be, you know, a higher up, a, one of the, um, one of the uh, advisors to the CEO of Chick-fil-A. Now, those are two Christian companies. But what about the companies that aren't Christian? Nebuchadnezzar wasn't a believer. God can send you on the board, send you high up in these areas, okay, to, to advise, to bring about his plan and his will in those corporations. So when we're talking about a high anointing and a high calling, that's what we're talking about, okay? God is not playing around, okay? He's not messing around with this new seer anointing, praise God. It's to be used in the marketplace, and we know seers right now that are called by government, governments, okay, called by governments to come in and pray, you know, praise God. Even Obama called in um, uh, David Hogan. He had uh, also two T.D. Jakes come to the White House, different people to advise him spiritually. All right. And so what if you are one of those people that God has assigned to work high up in government 
or high up in corporations. A high call of God is on you, okay, as a seer. This is a high call. This is a, a, this is a great anointing, a great grace and power and authority that God has assigned to you. Hallelujah. I'm ready. <laughs> Praise God. Well, God, make me even more ready. <laughs> Bless the Lord. But he knows if he opens, if he tells me to go and he tells me what to say, he knows I'm going to say it. Okay. He guys have to hold me back. back. Hold off, Tina. Now, wait a minute. Now, let me get him in order and him in order before you talk. I'm the kind of person that God has to restrain from talking. <laughs> okay. What do you want me to say, God? Where do you want me to go? And what do you want me to say? That is my heart. Okay. Oh, hallelujah. Timothy is saying, I feel that in the spirit. Amen. Praise God. And so we are talking about visions today, um, uh, internal and external visions. And we just tapped on, I mean, this is just a, uh, the, you know, just a, what are you, the tip of the iceberg here. And, and what God is doing today, you know, is bringing this information up to you, you know, so that you can be ready and you can be prepared, that you have a platform to operate from. He will have a platform to operate from. Uh, a foundation to operate from on you as the wind of the spirit blows by that foundation has already been set that he can build you up even more and more and assign you to what your purpose is hallelujah as a prophetic seer hallelujah this is a high call of god <laughs> amen amen hallelujah so we have the apostles we have the prophets and we know that, um, what, is it, what is the scripture says that it, the, the church is, is, is being built by, what's that scripture? On the foundation on of the, the apostles and prophets. On the foundations of the apostles and prophets. And this is a foundation of your foundation, <laughs> okay? This is the foundation of the foundation that God has assigned you to. And so he wants you to be ready and geared up. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you newbies? Okay. Are you prophets in training? Apostles in training? Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. The anointing is real. The power is great uh, that God wants to manifest through you because he already said after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall receive power. And the power that you receive is to be his witness. Everything that you need to be his witness, to bring his glory in the earth, wherever he's assigned you, is assigned to you. Hallelujah. And that power is manifesting in the visions and in the dreams that he gives you as a seer. Because it is your, your regular everyday operation. And when you really think about it, has a day gone by that God hasn't spoken to you, prophet of God? Okay, apostle of God. Has there been any day? that has gone by when God hasn't shown you something, you know, really look at your, your track record. Record. You already have a record with God. All right. There's not too many days that, that, that go by that God hasn't said something to you, hasn't led you in some way. You may not have heard his audible voice. You may not have heard his inner voice, but there was a leading, something that you got from God. And it's so, it's so second nature to you now, you know, that you don't even realize now that that's God leading you. And I bet that if you sat down and looked at the last week, there was an intervention with God every day in your life. If you're a prophet or apostle, I know that there has been. I know that there has been. You haven't paid much attention to it, and that's, where we're, that's what this teaching is all about. God wants to bring you to the place that you are paying attention more to the dreams and the vision that he gives you. When he gives you a dream, he's talking to you about you and other stuff, but the visions are to reveal his nature. So we're praying that your eyes are open so that you can see what Jesus sees, but then when you do see it, you're not afraid, you're not weary. You're not confused. You're not perplexed that you know that you know that you know that it's God. And this is, you take on the attitude, come on, God, let's do this thing. Okay, let's do it. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Praise Hallelujah. God. Praise God. And so, uh, bless the Lord, we uh, believe that prophetess, um, Lady Charmaine Denson is coming on after us this morning. Praise God. And we're looking forward to hearing her this morning. Praise God. And we just wanted, it's about quarter of the hour now. And we, would, we just want to refresh you uh, in some prayer today. Praise God. But just we're going to just take a minute and we're going to wait on the Lord. And we're going to wait on the Lord and see what else he has to say. Praise God. And we want this word to sink in, to, to be rooted. We want you to be rooted and grounded, you know, in this word as we follow this path that God has given us. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. That one? Four? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're just waiting on the Lord. We wait on you. He is holy. Thank 
He is worthy to be praised. We wait on you. Don't you want to worship him? Is it your spiritual of the Lord so fully that your shadow heal, heals people. Amen. Praise God. Being filled up with the glory of God. Praise God. Seek Him earnestly each morning. Oh, before you get things started in the day, call upon His name. Get filled so you're walking in the overflow and not just in your reserves, okay? Get ready for your day. Get ready for your day. Thank you for joining us. Oh, it's part of that. Oh, but we'll seek the Lord for yourselves also. Then when you come together, there might be a prophecy, there might be a vision, there might be a word, there might be a, a dream. Praise God. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. I'm going to ask him to bring it back. Oh, he just gave me a word for you to encourage you. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Let the glory of the Lord shine round about those who fear him mm -hmm. and delivers them. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Don't you know the Lord is calling you to grace? Oh, he's calling you to ministry. You reach people that we can't reach over here in Phoenix. You reach people that only you can reach. You have your own family, your own circle of influence. So you're important. Praise God. There's some children that you can reach. There's some young people. Hmm. There's neighbors. And we're all needed. We're all needed. Hallelujah. So the Lord is saying that you've been hanging out with us on the Prophets Teaching Group. You've been hanging out with all the apostles and the teachers, <coughs> Apostle Cox, Prophetess Sabina, you know, and all of the, uh, the people have, who have joined us, all the other ministers. And I see you as I am watching and, and hearing and gleaning from what God has, is presenting. I see that you are as well. And so what the Lord wants you to know is not to take these teachings lightly. This is not just entertainment, although it is entertaining. We can be very entertaining. God, you know, is all about entertainment. He'll entertain you. Praise God. Hey, El Zeta. But, so, but God, what, what God wants you to know is that, you, that as you've been hanging out, he wants you to understand that he's called you to this place to hang out with him. Okay, so you're hanging out in his presence. Uh, praise God. And so what he's saying to you is that you are actually being increased. The anointing and grace and glory of God in you is being increased. He's provided this platform, this place for you to come and to drink of his glory, to drink of his grace. You know, through the words that you've been receiving from all these dynamic apostles 
and prophets. Hallelujah. And so he doesn't want you to take it lightly. You know, not that you have to be all serious and stiff about it, but he wants you to know how, how important this is and how pleased he is with you that you have placed yourself in the presence and in the company of this prophetic group. Praise God, not only this group, but it, other learnings that you're getting. But God is speaking more specifically today about the prophet's teaching group, and I'm going to say even more specifically with Jonathan and I. Apostle Cox is on. Apostle Vircher is on. We have other apostles that are coming on. Hallelujah. We have Prophetess Denny, you know, and uh, Apostle Connie Stone, and Kathy Dorn, or Prophetess, praise God, Seer. All of these teachings are adding to that platform, adding to that foundation that God, you know, has been establishing in you. And you are going to surprise yourself, Cindy. All of you are going to be so surprised on that day when God, when God casts you out there. Okay, well, actually what he's going to tell you to do is he's going to tell you to cast your net on the other side of the boat. <laughs> and so when he goes, when he gives you that instruction, you know, go to the other, you ain't been catching too many fish over here on this side. Cast your net on the other side of the boat. And in that transition to the other side of the boat, you are going to be surprised at the catch. Okay, and you are going to be surprised at what's inside of you that's going to come out when it's time to catch those other fish. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you're going to have so many that not one boat can hold them. <laughs> you have to call all your friends, all the other prophets and apostles. Come on, get some of this harvest. Come on, get some of this. This is good over here. Praise God. And so I just want you to be encouraged. The Lord wants you to be encouraged today that as you have set your time and attention to hear, it is not for naught. God has not brought you all this blessing, all this word in a void. It is for a purpose as he's establishing himself in you in great and dynamic ways, ways that even right now you can't even see all the ways of what God is, how God is knitting together the words, the glory, the anointings, and the grace that he's assigned to you. Hallelujah. So that you can go to the other side of the boat and get that fantastic anointing, great catch of the harvest. Okay. The harvest of multiplication that he has in the kingdom of God in all realms, in every echelon. He's sending us out as the called out ones. But not only have we been called out, we've been called into something. We've been called to go forth and to bring his glory. Praise God. And that's the word for you today. Amen. Bless the Lord. So you're going to pray us out. Amen. I believe that some of you have been touched today and that you should put a seed on this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Give, give Prophet Tina a call at 602-702-6284 or you can go to what's the one dot me? Okay. Or... PayPal dot me backslash Prophet Tina. Okay. We'll put it up on, uh, on, the, on the, uh, the playback. Okay. Seed into these anointings. A lot of people have been doing that, and we see the increase of God in their lives, increase financially and increase spiritually, where God said he would rebuke the devourer for your sake as you give your tithes. We're not saying give your tithes to us, you know, but what we're saying is that you need to understand um, the anointing of seed time and harvest. A seed time and harvest will always be as long as the earth is. And so we have planted into you today through the spirit of the living God. And so we're asking you to plant a seed in it and make sure that the amounts that you give add up to the number 10. You can give $1,900,000 if you want to, or you can give 19 or 91, 910, 1,900, you know, so that the numbers together will add up, you know, 73, to 73, 64, yeah, 64 55, you know. Uh, those amounts. Oh, and watch what God is going to do in that prophetic gesture that he's encouraged us to give to you. That, that number 10 has meaning, hallelujah, for you in completion, you know, of God, hallelujah, that the things that he wants to complete in you. So it is a prophetic sign, it's a prophetic anointing on the seed that you give into uh, these graces that God is establishing. And, and, and watch what God and how God is going to multiply you supernaturally. We're talking about supernatural giving to a supernatural God who wants you to move out in the power of his supernatural anointing and grace. Praise God. Put a seed on it, okay, and watch the growth of God uh, um, exponentially. Okay, he's going to multiply you geometrically and exponentially as he sends you to the other side of the boat to get that catch. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
bless the Lord, they caught enough fish, boy, they could feed the whole, everybody and made a lot of money on it, okay? <laughs> Praise, right. God. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise you know, God. the Lord is blessing, and he wants to bless you as we go here. Hallelujah. There's so much more the Lord wants to share, and that's why we're going to be back here tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning at yeah. 5 o'clock Pacific Time, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. I do believe I'm going to talk about discernment of spirits tomorrow. I think that's what the Holy Spirit, you know, he'll drop it into me, but we're going to talk about how important the discerning of spirits is in this uh, seer anointing, the seer, the prophetic seer. The, this is the season of the seer, the era of the seer, the saints that see. Hallelujah. Very important to have the gift of of the discerning of spirits operating, discerning good and evil, okay? That so we got to go. a really good conversation Amen. because <laughs> they're, you know, some people are shocked by what they see. Uh -huh. and they need to know a lot what to do about it. Amen. Praise God. We love you guys. The Lord bless you Woo! and keep you. The mm -hmm. Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom. His God peace. bless. Amen. God bless you. We love you, you guys. See you tomorrow morning.